Okay, well it's nine o'clock, so we'll call this regular meeting of the commissioner's court to order here on the 15th day of October, nine o'clock here at the courthouse. If y'all rise for the invocation, Brother Hurd. Uh, first, let me say good morning to each of you. Let us all bow, please. Father God, as we come to you this morning, Father. We come acknowledging you as God. Come confessing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Come to say, Father God, thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we live in a country, Father, so we can have such meetings as these. Now, as I come to you, Father, on behalf of this judge, this commissioner's court, Father God, these county officials, Father God, I come to you, Father, asking, Father, for your continuous grace, your continuous mercy, Father. We come, Father God, asking for your divine wisdom on behalf of these county officials. We pray for the citizens of Tyler's County, which they represent. Father, we pray for our state. We pray for our nation, Father God, as our national motto is in God we trust. We pray, Father God, that you lead each person in a way that's pleasing to you. We pray for your divine protection over Tyler's County. Father, we ask that you lead us all and guide us. Keep us all in your holy and divine will. These things we ask and we pray in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number one, public comments and requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with section 551.042, the Texas Open Meetings Act. Have anybody like to speak? Okay, number, number two, presentation by the City of Talco concerning completion and repair of the eight miles of road in Talco with possible action. Hollis? Thank y'all for what y'all done on the streets. I've done a fantastic job. It looked real good for the fourth. None of the city council are there in a meeting in Texarkana, so I'm filling in for them. So basically what, what they're asking are, are y'all going to be willing to continue? And if so, maybe get a timeline on it. Um, and then there's one of the streets, I think Lawrence Street is still got the dirt on it, hadn't been seal coated. And we've got some people there that are complaining of the dust because it we haven't been blessed with much rain lately. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyhow, all I, all I'm going to do is report back to the city council. Uh, when when we started that project over there, uh, Nanette's not here today. I, th I think it was around four hundred thousand. Is is that correct, guys? Do y'all know the total on that figure? I, I'm quoting a figure that I'm not real positive on that number. I don't know. <clears throat> but we've got about a hundred and I think a hundred and ninety thousand left. There's a hundred and eighty, hundred and ninety thousand left in that. When we come over there, we were just going to do the chip ceiling is is all they were supposed to do. This is the four guys that, that did the work there and their crews. <clears throat> There's a, I think there's some type of misunderstanding we need to get with the city council over there. If they're going to bring the roads up and, and have them ready, uh, we could have chip sealed those roads in two or three days. But I think they got into a little more than 
that's going to let the commissioner speak upon that part of it and see and need to get with Talco. If, if there's 180 some thousand up there, I, I don't know if we can chip seal that this year or not. That's a question for these four gentlemen here. But then uh, if you want to get someone to do those roads, there's no ditches and stuff. The roads weren't pulled. What our understanding was that the roads would be all prepared. All we'd do is come in and chip seal those eight miles of roads, what my understanding was. Now, if I'm different on that, you commissioners let me know. But I think it's what we passed in uh, Commissioner Court to come in and chip seal the roads. Right. Not the eight rebuild. miles of road. Mm -hmm. okay. So <clears throat> as far as uh, how much is left there, we need to get with them. I don't know how much that one road that you're talking about is just the dirt. Uh, I'm assuming y'all are the ones that, that built that up. Mm -hmm. it, was just, <clears throat> it was just missed for some reason or another. I don't know why we missed it, but it was that road was just missed when we chip sealed up there that day. D does that one road conclude? I, I don't know how much more they're saying that, that's over there needs to be done, Holly. So uh, if they could get with us on that. Uh, there is some funds left there. There's not a lot of funds left there. Uh, it, <clears throat> what we give... Uh, these guys give their their labor for free yeah. uh, with all their crew and so this has just gone for materials over there and uh, so we need to get with them I don't have an answer for you when they could complete that uh, if that road is ready for that uh, I don't know how much hot weather we got left uh, for y'all to do that that's a commissioner question so any idea With the weather getting like it is, I don't, I don't foresee being able to do it this, you know, this year. The uh, trouble is, it don't bond, you know, when, it when it's cold weather. Uh -oh. It won't bond. Uh -oh. Dana, maybe you can get with the city council and, and okay. um, the preacher and all them and see. Okay. Like I said, it's uh, good luck this week. There's on the highs, it's in the 70s. And there's one low in the 30s. I just don't think that, uh, you know, the oil's not going to sit up very soon as you want to wait till 11 o'clock to, to try to do anything. But that, uh, I don't know how much they got left. That one little small area they got, which were chip sealed. Because the lady called me and complaining because it was, kids were sick and red dirt was in their air conditioned ducts and all that. And uh, I'll, I'll go over and look at it, see, measure, see how much it is. But, Possibility if it does get warm enough uh, in the next two weeks, we can get that part chip sealed, uh, and then the rest of that that balance that we did fund y'all over there, we could work with y'all on that as well, Hollis. Okay. If you get your contractor, whoever you want to do that part. Uh, like I said, they they carried their crews. All four commissioners carried their crews over there, and. Uh, weather permitting uh, if Dana can look at that and see and see how much road is left of that uh, and finish that that one road that I'm assuming that's the only road that you've got a problem with the, that's the only one that's still it's the only one that's still got dirt on it the Lawrence Street and it's yeah. Lawrence Lawrence we'll check on that uh, this week and uh, get you an answer back for that sounds good okay. thank you thank you Hollis Number three, considering possibly approve the minutes from the September 9th, 2024, regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court. Judge, so now I can take number two. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the September 9th, uh, 2024, regular meeting of the Commissioner Court minutes. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'll carry unanimously. Number four, considering possibly approve the minutes from the September 23rd, 2024 special meeting of the Commissioner's Court. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Got a motion made by Commissioner <clears throat> Mitchell to approve the 20, September 23rd, 24 special meeting uh, Commissioner's Court minutes. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <clears throat> That'll carry unanimously. Number five, considering possibly approve the fifth contract renewal with APRIS Inc. Incorporated, the vendor that provides the statewide automated victim notice services. <clears throat> and that's the scans for the year beginning in September 1, 2024.
contract that we have with the state and they let us know about the victims and they do all the reporting. Uh, this is something that we've done every year. The cost of this is $6,981.80 and this is the, be the fifth renewal of this, this contract that we've had with them. And this goes through the, the AG's office. Make make we approve. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve that. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Uh, yeah. All those opposed? That will carry unanimously. <clears throat> Number six, consider and possibly approve the 2025 Tallis County Resolution for the Indigent Defense Grant Program. <clears throat> this is for our <clears throat> lawyers and stuff that we get with our grant money. Uh, for those that are uh, cannot afford a lawyer and the indigent defense department. I make a motion to approve. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the 2025 Titus County Resolution for Indigent Defense Grant. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That will carry unanimously. Number seven, consider and possibly approve entering the service agreement with Valsolve Corporation Incorporated for high reach technology for mass emergency notification system. And the cost on that would be 7,500 for a year. And that includes all of Titus County, up to 32,000 in population. Jerry, you want to speak on that? Good morning. I'm here to ask you today to approve this contract with Harbor Reach. It's a mass emergency notification for the county. Um, I've been looking at this program for quite a while now. And then um, in July of last year, or excuse me, this year, when Barrel come up through Titus County, we had multiple warnings, one right after another, after another, after another. So after that night, I come in, I'm like, we got to have something that will notify the the citizens of Titus County. So back when I first started looking at this, the city and county was talking about splitting ways, and then I got a quote on it. Well then, after we went back together, I found out that the first quote we had would not cover the citizens inside the city limits. So I talked with the judge. We decided this wasn't a good idea. So I went back and had them requote it for 32,000 people. Is all 32,000 going to sign up for it? Probably not. But it's, it's there for 32,000, the city, the county. Anybody passing through Titus County, it'll automatically alert their cell phones as long as they're inside the county. If they live like Mount Vernon, they work here in Titus, as long as they're in Titus County, they'll get the alerts. It's only for Titus County. So in 2024, uh, Heat warnings, we had 16 posted for Titus. The flood forecast was 21. Uh, flash flood warnings, eight. Severe thunderstorm watches, seven. Severe thunderstorm warnings, 38. Tornado watches, 12. And tornado warnings, nine. And this was just for Titus County. Uh, hybrid reach system is a very good system. I've sent over an email to the sheriff's office, and uh, Mr. Livingston looked at it, researched it. He said this would be a good program. He thought it would work good for the sheriff's office and Titus County to send out alerts. And y'all should have copies. Copy it, yes. Yeah. Uh, we can send out, it automatically does, it's set up with um, Shreveport and NOAA radio. It automatically does, right off the bat, does your warnings, your watches for thunderstorms, tornadoes, anything like it. Automatically flood. Now, with this program, we can actually go into it and send out evacuation alerts to anybody. It works off a of TV, cell phone. Uh, yesterday, some of y'all might have got an amber alert on your TV screen. We can make it do that too. Telephones cell, tablets, uh, Alexa, Siri, it does it all. It's however you set it up to do it. It's, it's a free charge for these people to set it up. These people will give us a local phone number 
they can call and set it up that way. And they can go on the computer and set it up. And they can do it on their cell phone. They, they put in what they wish to be notified on. Also, this program will allow us, uh, a couple months ago, well, about, about three or four months ago, I guess, we had a man lost in Sugar Hill. All right. We could take this program, we get on scene, we pull up the mapping system, and then we could peg what area we think that he should be in. Uh, this guy was 70 something years old. He took off on foot. So he ain't gone far. We can actually peg this area out and we can send a notification to this area within what we peg. So it doesn't go to the whole county. We can send it right there. A child lost at the lake, same way. We know he's allowed, let's say, Blodgett, Monticello area. We can peg it, we can send out information to only that area, not the whole county. Or we can <coughs> send it out to the whole county. We can do whatever we want. Out at Jimmy's when we had the storm that night, then people was trapped in their homes, roads closed, power lines down in trees. If, you know, as long as they're signed up on it, we can send out a notification to them. We have downed trees, we have power lines in them trees, roads are closed, stay home. And we can give them the information that they need. Uh, it's, it's a real good program. The money, I put it back in my budget last year, and uh, y'all approved it on it, but Ms. Nanette said that y'all would have to approve the contract. It's a $7,500 a year contract. Thing that thing that me and you talked about that Jerry, it'll cover all of Titus County, not just the people in the county, but all in all of Titus County, the city all citizens as well. City, the county, and uh, the main thing that we're going to need to uh, push on this is to make sure that people get signed up for it. And uh, one of the other things that I did like about it, and, and speaking with Livingston over at the sheriff's department, if there's something comes up with the sheriff's department, Chris and them need something there, we can ping that out through that. They get a hold to you and get any messages we need out uh, as far as that goes as well. Yeah. This company's even got a, a division in their company that will take our information and help us make the flyers to get, to get passed out. Uh, our Titus County Emergency Management Facebook page, we have 3,600 and something people on it right now. And when we was posting all these warnings at night, there was multiple times people come back and say, well, I've been on the cities for I don't know how long, and I ain't got nothing in I don't know how long asking me what the problem was. So I just kept kind of researching it till I found this. Now the sheriff's office um, will put them in as, a, as long as it's all right for Chris and them, we'll put them in as a subcontract. Once they get set up in it, uh, they can actually just send messages to their own people. It doesn't have to go to all the citizens, it doesn't have to go to the county, it doesn't have to go to me. They can just do their own people, see, whatever they want to tell them. It's a real good program, and uh, I'd like for y'all to pass this so we can go ahead and get started on this thing. I think it's crucial for Titus County to have this. Uh, like I said, the, the only problem that, that concerns me is I want to make sure that we get these people signed up uh, because when we first started in with this, I got a lot of phone calls saying, well, I'm not getting, I didn't know about a tornado, I didn't know about this, and wasn't getting those alerts. And uh, the more that we notify, knowledge is power, and the more people that we do get notified in Titus County, it can help solve a lot of problems for us. And uh, at the 7,500 that we saved just a few lives here and there, that's well worth every penny of it. And covering the whole county is very important to us, uh, the city and the county, and that way we've got everybody included in it. So. Well, we put it on the radio, paper, uh, we do have a newspaper here today. And we'll, get, we'll get with her and, and try, lady right there. we want to get the word out on that uh, so that they can sign up. Another good thing that I did like about this system, you don't have to get on, on your computer to sign up. If you want to do it on the telephone, you can send your uh, phone number that way. You don't have to be on the computer to get it done. Uh, so that helps some of our older people that don't want to get on computers and things of that nature. It gives them a response to be able to hear that. So uh, I'm very much in favor of this. And, uh, like that. Hey, at the end of the first year, you know, we can sit down and we can look at it. Okay, so we got, and it'll tell you this many people that live in the county with their addresses is here, and this is how many is in the city. But it kind of varies because a lot of people got post office boxes, which is going to show the city address. 
but we can get a close idea at the end of the first year on where we're at. Plus, we're not asking the city for any money on this. We're going to take care of this as the county uh, because it will include everybody in Titus County, our citizens in the city limits and outside the city limits. So uh, I, I really think it's a good program for us to consider. Thank you, Jerry. Do you all got any questions for Jerry? I make a motion we approve. I got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman to approve the service agreement with Valsoft as our mass emergency notification system for $7,500 a year to include all of Titus County, the 32,000 in population. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. those opposed? Aye. That'll carry unanimously as well. Number eight, considering possibly accept the award for rural law enforcement salary assistant program, which is the grant SB 22 for our county attorney's office, at the amount of 175,000, and in the sheriff's office for 350,000 as a matter of the record. Don't have to have an action on that. We just need to put that in. We've already got this grant again. Uh, everybody signed those. We have received that. Number nine, considering possibly accept the award of rural law enforcement salary assistant program, grant SB 22. Do y'all need to accept that? It's a matter of record. Just, just as a matter of record. It's just a matter of record. Right? We accept it. I'll make a motion to accept that as a matter of record. I'll make a motion we accept it. Okay. Motion second. made by Commissioner Parchman, a second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Number nine, considering possibly accept the award of the Rural Law Enforcement Salary Assistant Program, grant SB 22 for the district attorney in the amount of 175000 as a matter of record. Make a motion to accept it. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman to accept that grant. For the hundred seventy-five thousand, Second. seconded by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number ten. Considering possibly approve the purchase of a 2024 Ram 3500 truck from Elliott Auto Group, which I think that's EAG now, through the TIPS contract number two two zero three zero four, for sixty-four thousand. $965.45, and that will be for the Sugar Hill Fire Department, and that will be on a lease as well, like we've doing all the other trucks that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Jerry? Yeah, Sugar Hill was next in rotation for the truck, and um, the, the 25 models have gotten up so expensive right now. I mean, they're way above what we can budget in for it. So I talked with Casey, and uh, we did find a 2024 Ram four-wheel drive uh, with a bed on it, which it's in the figures. Do y'all have a copy of this up there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 6100 for the bed, and then the real guard was 1290. So that kept us under the $65,000 budget. Uh, the truck would be leased out to Sugar Hill for one dollar a year, and then they have to put their equipment on top of it. Now the judge and I talked about it the other day is going forward. This will catch up the rotation because we skipped a year when we were discussing the fire department. So this gets everything caught back up in the play. Going forward from now, uh, we'll keep up with the VFDs. We'll figure we'll see what they're doing yearly on runs, the people running. And it's it's a lot of them agree with me, the chiefs do, that it's not fair to give a truck to a department when they're only making 30 and 40 calls a year when you got departments out here that's making 150, 200 a year. They're the ones that's putting the miles on the trucks and wear and tear on the trucks. So come next year, if the funds are available, we'll sit down and we'll take a look at that and see who's making the runs and, and 
What, what me and Jerry talked about on that is is to make sure, and with the new system, uh, we'll be able to monitor that a little closely uh, with the calls and who's making what calls, uh, number-wise. And uh, if we've got a department that's, that's using a truck a whole lot more than the other department, it, it's not necessarily, uh, the wear and tear is not necessarily on, on the others just because they're in a the rotation. So it would be more of an evaluation of each fire department each year and then decide uh, which where the fire truck will go. Uh, if we do if we do purchase one each year that doesn't mean that we have to purchase one each year uh, but we'll look into each department see what the needs are and then go from there on that well, yeah, we, if the funds are available we've already purchased one for 2024 and this would be the purchase for 2025 is that correct that's correct okay we're just doing it now okay this, well, this is, our, is a new year yeah i know it. that's our new that's financial year right yeah. okay That's all I had. I'm good. I'll make a motion to accept it. Got a motion made by Commissioner uh, Applewhite to approve the purchase of the 2024 Ram 3500 truck from EAG Auto Group. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number 11, considering possibly approve the payment of indigent burial for $950. The reason this is in court today, this didn't have a family or the JPs couldn't get a hold of a family. Uh, they did make the, the call uh, for the funeral home to come out and uh, not being able to get a hold of a family and to find out if there is indigent, the JP sent that over and said that it is an indigent service. And so that's why it's on the agenda. What has the fee been in the past? It's been 950. 950. Mm -hmm. Hadn't gone up. I make a motion to approve that. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve that. Second. Second. Commissioner Applewhite, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number, carry unanimously. Number 12, considering possibly approve the resolution for the Titus County Commissioner's Court authorizing Commissioner <coughs> Precinct 1 to undertake repairs to the parking lot of the Piney Baptist Church for voting box in precinct two. John Mark, do you want to speak on that? I know we've talked about it, make sure it was legal for us to be able to do that. Yes, sir. You might want to get that microphone. The church uh, contacted us. Jerry's a little taller. <laughs> you think? Just a little? <laughs> uh, the church contacted us about making some improvements to the parking lot. Uh, as the court's aware, we can't go into private property and repair. Uh, but there's an exception in this scenario because that's a voting booth. That's a voting area. And uh, on the basis of it being a voting area, we don't need people getting out to vote and falling in a, in a hole and breaking her ankle or whatever. And so I did some research on it. I, I, just to double check, I even called TAC to make sure my thought process was correct and they agreed so uh what i think we need to do is is make those repairs for that church parking lot uh because we got vote early voting coming up just next week or something it's coming up real fast on us so we early vote will be down here but that'll be election well, day there but the, the voting day will be around the corner right so so anyway i i think it's in the best interest of the county to fix that parking lot i we're not we're going to be using uh could you speak on this commissioner about what, what the, the the process we're not we're using the Reclaim. the uh, leftover reclaim asphalt uh, it, i looked at the situation it's not that bad it's got some dips in it where it holds water and whatnot so it wouldn't be a very big process to fix it you feel okay. comfortable that we can get it done before the 30 days so that so to be ready for election day absolutely okay yes sir so I, that's my recommendation as we do that i just want you to speak on that because there is some some uh, clarification there uh, on what we can do uh, property owners uh, so that they know uh, they see us out there doing that they think well we're doing it for everybody but it is a voting place and uh, and we did get it approved through tax so got a motion i make a motion to approve that repairs on the voting stations got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the uh, repairs of the Piney parking lot uh, for the voting precinct two box. Second. 
Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I abstain. Judge, don't mind. I'm going to abstain from my vote on that. Abstain. considering possibly approve the reestablishment of position of veteran service office and to appoint Doug Powell to fill this position. And we have Mrs. Ann Burton. Would you like to speak? Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I'm kind of the unusual one in the room. I've come here from Paris this morning. And the reason I am doing that is because as a veteran, working in Paris, assisting other veterans. I've had quite a number of people from Titus County and from Mount Pleasant that have come into my office seeking care. Now, normally, most counties try to have a service officer who's going to be available. And I know, according to the census, uh, Titus County had uh, about 1,400 veterans that self-identified on the last census. And those are self-identified. I say that because, believe it or not, a lot of people don't believe if you serve that you're a veteran unless you've served in combat. And I'm kind of an oddball in that arena as well. I am a combat veteran. I served 24 years in the Navy. I was a healthcare administrator and retired in that uh, capacity. And I, along the way, I also worked for the Workforce Center. So I know there are a lot of services here. The problem is you don't have anyone who's helping to coordinate that for your citizenry. And when it comes down to it, those benefits they've earned through their service come back to the community, because none of us can serve without a community behind us. And when you're thinking about it, a lot of times we think about disability compensation. Well, that's something that is a big deal, because in this tight economy, an extra $200 can mean the difference between being able to get groceries and not. And your average veteran in this area according to what they have here, is not receiving full monthly compensation for some of the disabilities I've seen come through. That tells me that it's not only not being captured, but you may have a lot of people who don't even know they're entitled. On top of that, you have surviving spouses and family members of people who have died as a result of their service-connected injuries. Agent Orange, unfortunately, was a terrible disgrace. It took until 1991 for any condition other than chloroacne to actually be recognized as being associated with Agent Orange. And in my personal experience, I've had spouses who lost their loved ones as far back as 2010 or 2015 who've only recently gotten compensation because there is a benefit called dependent indemnity compensation, which most of the surviving spouses are completely unaware that they may be eligible for. There's also a pension, so if someone's extremely low income, they can apply for that, either as a veteran who maybe has a day of active service that occurred during a period of war, but unfortunately they've fallen on hard times, or as a surviving spouse whose loved one served during a period of war. And unfortunately, there are very few periods of peace that we can look back on. And I would urge you very strongly to do this reestablishment for your citizenry, not just the ones who are here now, but the ones who are serving are going to come back. When I looked at some of the things that are on the Census Bureau, I noticed that, for instance, people with disabilities in this area uh, below 65 uh, were 8.6% of the population. We have no idea how many of those may be veterans. And the median income was pretty high, but the per capita income was about 25,000. And believe it or not, that's right on the federal poverty guideline. I can't find a better reason than to just help your citizenry to see about what you can do to increase their income so that they have the money to live and you know most of that income is going to stay in the community. And those who want to buy houses, about 66% of the population here has their own home. But that means that you have over 30% who do not. And many times that can seem out of reach. But the VA home loans have just recently changed to even include broker's fees. 
So it may be something that's available, not just for, for the veteran, but also the surviving spouses have that benefit too. And so I would urge you very strongly to get someone in the office who is going to be able to dedicate the time and energy necessary to not only become an accredited service officer, but to be able to do what's necessary to make sure veterans are not invisible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amy. And, and you talked about uh, spouses having uh, rights as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been visiting with Doug about this, and he's already starting to try to get updated on all of these things. Something that I was unaware of, if those uh, spouses remarry before the age of 55, they lose some of those benefits and things, which is, they do. is, is kind of crazy for them. Yes. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, Doug's already starting to get on top of that. That's uh, good. We've got a school schedule for him for a week. And uh, also, uh, Mr. Coburn sitting beside him, a lieutenant colonel, is that correct? He's in the uh, reserves and uh, he's, he's going to be in his office. So we're not only going to get uh, Doug, we're going to get two for one. We're going to get a Great. lawyer that goes along with him and, and can help us on that. I hope and, that and maybe down the road there might be a veteran treatment court available in the area as there is in the uh, Metroplex and some of the uh, rural areas up north. Because honestly, like I said, if we can give back, we can make all the difference. And the age 55 is for the federal benefits. Mm -hmm. If they remarry and they are getting the tax exemption in Texas, they lose that benefit altogether. Right. And it's making sure they know what they can and can't do. And we're not trying to restrict people from doing it. But we just want them to do it with know wisdom. Their, know what their benefits are and, and the causes of it. And, and like I said, uh, Doug brought that to my attention earlier. And uh, so there's a lot of things that, that we, we need to help our veterans. Our veterans. Uh, all gave some and uh, we need to give back to them as much as we can here in Titus County. Absolutely and and frankly with the indigent burials that's something I've dealt with in the Paris area something to keep in mind is the spouses have a burial benefit as well and it's often overlooked we've had uh, something in the American Legion called missing in America that has allowed to identify veterans or their spouses who literally were cremated and left on a shelf for up to 90 years we can make sure they're honored appropriately Proper burial, for sure. We appreciate you driving over, Miss Amy, and, and uh, Doug may be hollering at you some as well. Not we a problem. appreciate all, all your help. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to make the motion that we, we reinstate our veteran service officer and appoint Douglas Powell to fill that position. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carried unanimously. Number 14, consider and discuss the subject <coughs> budgeting the proportion of designated funds for road materials to each precinct based on road mileage in each precinct with possible action. You know, we, we, we look at this and everything and just uh, trying to figure out the best way to do it and uh, Nothing com uh, for precinct one or precinct uh, against precinct one, precinct two is, but you know we've I've have a a lot of we spent already fifty thousand dollars on material since the first of the month trying to get these rows picked up and fixed up and everything, and we're right now we're on thirty forty five and it's going to be about seven tenths to a mile to chip seal it. We chip sealed uh, part on thirty three. Uh, 3330 about four tenths of a mile and uh, so this is what uh, I'm just asking did you know we do it where we get the money where it's uh, equal to everybody well I think there's a, <clears throat> another way to do it like y'all y'all know how I feel about this already uh, I mean it's gonna hurt me and Joe D uh, on this and uh, I still think that we should be able to pull from general funds to help you uh, to get your roads where you, they need to be instead of crippling precinct one and precinct two. Well, I said precinct three is already crippled. <laughs> well, I mean, I understand that, but yeah. I mean, I'm just, I want to be able to pull a bigger see, yeah. portion. Precinct four, I mean, yeah, Jimmy has the same amount of roads you do. Jimmy, uh, how's your road money and all that? Well, uh, right now my money is, is fairly good because I didn't get to do any chip sealing this year. Uh, that storm do, came Do you through. have enough to go around in your precinct to the same amount of road as his? Do, do you do, have enough money every year to do that? 
it's close sometimes. Yeah. Real close. Well, it's close in mine, and you know I, I'm not willing to give up any of anything out of my precinct that that I, I mean because it's it's my precinct and it takes every bit I got to, to maintain it. So I, I know he hurts for money because he's got more roads than I do. Well, but I'm not willing to. We to we give stepped up. the road last week. It was a, just a little over a mile, and. Uh, I've put a little over forty thousand dollars in that. that it, it's unbelievable the, the it's, oil cost and stuff. If it's got oil in it, it's just the cost is unbelievable. Uh, it's just uh, everything's so high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When you're paying a hundred, hundred and five, hundred and three, no, it went up to hundred and five uh, dollars for oil sand mm -hmm. a ton. It, it, it gets expensive real quick. Yeah. Uh, four loads is ten thousand dollars. Yeah, almost eleven. Yeah, but I just need to, you know, figure a way to, you know, help precinct three out with that. Well, how much money? I mean, do you really do you think it would take right now to get your roads? Pretty much that's for that's year? I don't know. It's a, I've got a bunch that you know got to yeah. chip seal and redo and all that. You know. <laughs> But I think we should be able to, like, if you need a hundred thousand, whatever it may be, we should be able to pull it out of general funds. I mean, we got the money there to do it, so we might as well use some of it if we need to to help you out. Are you going to pull it out of general fund every year? Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You need to be able to get where you pull enough out to get your roads to where they need to be. Then you can use the money that you get out of your budget to maintain. That's what I'm saying. Get a big portion of it and, and do all your roads at one time if you, if you can do that. Only thing, Titus County is uh, this is the way it's been set up for forever, I guess. I mean, it, it, we've split it up and helped each other and worked together on everything. But it does take a lot in road material. I understand that. But uh, you know, I mean, take it away from ours because I mean, I'm stretched to the limit every every year. We go down to the last spending. But uh, and my my account wouldn't look like it is right now if it wasn't for the ARPA funds and me selling assets that I that I had. So that's that's why mine looks like it is, but it will be depleted. I mean I still got a lot of work to do with mine as well. So. Like I said, it was at one time it was was by the uh, by, paid about by the mileage and it just for some reason it went away. And uh, I talked to a few commissioners and when they was here that's why they did it. It was yeah you got so much then and uh, after that you got percentage of road miles for money and everything was never equal. But I got you know I got to fight for my precinct just like y'all do. Yeah, and we understand that. Yeah. You know, regardless how the outcome, it, you know. Could you get us a, uh, a total maybe how many how many miles of road that. that I know you got some that may be better than others. Uh, a figure where that that uh, I'm assuming that if you got that much road, you're gonna need to. If, if we did put some money aside over there, I don't think you could do it all with just your road hands either. You'd have to mm -hmm. maybe sub subcontract a, a contractor to come in and, and build those roads up, and then uh, after that, get them to where you're just chip sealing and maintaining. Yeah, let's see. Most time, you know, I've, I've been not hadn't been able to chip seal, but one time over them, and you know. It takes, you know, to keep it good, look like maybe you had to do it twice, make it stay, you know. And I hadn't been able to afford to do that. You know, one one time is all I've got, you know. That's all I have, one time. Until, until, until you get a dollar figure, I think if you could get a dollar figure, I, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but until you get a dollar figure, we don't know exactly how much what percentage I know what you're saying is on the miles and right. and I can I can see where you're coming from on that and I see where Jeff comes on he is uh, so <clears throat> until you have a, well, you got a figure uh, yeah. you know the net made this here while back back in August with the uh, how much it would affect uh, each precinct mm -hmm. and uh, so you know I could it affect precinct one about 132,000 and precinct two about 38,000 But like I said, even if it affects them, if it affects Jeff to 100,000, 
and uh, Joe D. 30,000. That's 150,000. Is that going to take care of your roads? 150,000 is, is well, the one time, uh, maybe. I don't know. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, if we can get more of a figure towards that, then we kind of know what we do need to take to put to that to get your roads to maybe where, right. you, where you can survive yeah. with, with your budget like that. But, you know. I, well, you know, Jimmy's got to find my roads. If you give to one, you got to give to the other. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. That's up to y'all. Y'all four are the ones who got to work the roads together. So we work good as a, I mean, we all work together. We yeah. help each other out and stuff like that. This is something that's got to be figured out before we vote on the way I look at it. Because it's every day, it's getting worse and worse every day on mine. You know, like I said, we out there right now, we got eight loads come into where it's Sugar Hill, trying to get that over 30. 1915, 1910, take care of everything, and he just takes everything I got. With the, with the weather coming in the way it is, is that what y'all said? We're, going, we're not going to be able to chip seal for a while, maybe until spring. Road work's about over. It's just yeah. for patching sure. and yeah. patching and and maybe a little scabbing, and, and the scabbing's just about over with too because you it, that stuff just walks with you. If you put it on that road to coal, right. it just walks with you. You can't get it packed in. It won't stay. You're just throwing money away by doing it that way. So it's mostly from here from here to early spring. It's it's pretty much just patching. <clears throat> so Dude, I just basically you know, what we need to do is, is if we are going to do it. I mean, there's nothing you can do right now with it. Anyway, if we're giving the money, he couldn't do the roads. Is that is that what I'm hearing right or no? You know, I got you know. There's a couple of weeks that we can do weather. You know, as long as the weather don't get below 30. You know, but uh, but it's going to have to warm up a little because look the weather. I looked at next two weeks, 70 and 80, to the temperature and everything. So we we're out trying to get something done. So we might be able to get that over there yeah. sealed as well. Right. Uh, but what did y'all decide to do with with that excess money that y'all were going to get part of the other day? We had to spend it. I offered it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. I offered it to uh, right. to him, and, and he said he was okay. Right, right at the time. But like I said, it's, I hate taking money from, you know, a different kind of, I, you know, appreciate it. I do appreciate it. It's just that, you know, if something happens, you know, well, I want my money back. You know, that's, I don't, you know, that's the deal. You know, I understand that uh, tremendous, but I just think that, you know, we've got to do something now or we, it'll never get done. We've done put table list uh, twice. And uh, you know, I just can't just keep bringing it to court. We got to we got to do something now. I make a motion we do the by the mileage. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to fund it by the road mileage for each precinct. I'll second. Got a second by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Uh, Aye. I'm going to abstain because I don't work on these roads with y'all, and so if you can get me a number, I can't vote on something without a number uh, just to move that and uh, decide which house going to hurt every precinct. But uh, so if we can get a number, then maybe we can bring that back up. So number 15. Be considering possibly approved posting the speed limit on County Road 1170 at 25 miles an hour. Jeff, is that this? Uh, this is a road that goes. It's in yours. It's in my precinct, but this is just a, a real short road. It's about 400 yards long, and, and they they come off the main road flying because it goes. The main road goes this way, and then this is short road. It's uh, north of Winfield there, and there's a bunch of kids that play and stuff in there, and they're fixing to hit a major highway, and I need to slow them down for the kids, especially. Sheriff Bragg, it, as long as we post a sign, there's got to be a sign posted before you can do anything. Is that correct as well? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Voter report, signs posted. Signs posted before you can do anything. I have the signs, and as soon as we approve this, well, they'll be up. I've got, I've got something else on that, too that I found out that I didn't know. We, at one time, we were out of the black lettering for our, that we put on our sign. And we've got some that have got red lettering on them. And Chris might can attest to this, but uh, 
I was told by Highway Patrol that they would not enforce anything unless it was black lettering on the sign. So, need to make sure that everything. Yeah, black these lettering are on these the are store bought signs. Oh, they got to be okay. the, the lettering. I didn't be take no spray so paint. It's got to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that correct, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Okay. So yours are black. So we're good yeah. to go there with the right. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, approve this. Got a motion made by Commissioner uh, Mitchell to approve the County Road 1170 uh, 25 mile an hour speed limit. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh. All those opposed? Passes unanimously. Number 16, considering possibly approve the holidays for the 2025 calendar year. I make a motion to approve the holidays for 2025. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the holidays for 2025. Y'all have all got a copy of those? Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number 17 is considering possibly approve the Commissioner's Court schedule for the 2025 year. As you note there, uh, May the 27th will be a Tuesday. And October the 14th will also be a Tuesday. All the others will be our Monday, uh, the second and fourth Mondays as, as normal on our calendar year. Make a motion for approval. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve those. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Number 18, approve oral and written reports from the county officials. Make a motion we approve them. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman to approve the oral and written reports of the county officials. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 19, considering possibly accept the treasurer's report as a matter of record. I make a motion to accept the treasury report. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to accept the treasurer's report. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Number 20, approve the budget amendments. Ms. Linda, do you want to speak she on that? She has to, um, you know, 2025 01 um, is to transfer training and runs for the BFDs to Department 541. Yes, ma'am. The next one's line item transfer for cell phone for the sheriff department. And then 2025-02 budget for the BSO officer. And then two is to budget insurance for SB 22 funds for the assistant investigator. She said if you don't have any questions. Make a motion to approve the budget amendments. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve the budget amendments. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 21, sign pay orders and approve our payments. Make a motion to pay our bill. Motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve the payments. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those Aye. opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 22, closing comments. Yes, you have anything? Yeah, I want to thank all three precincts for helping us chip seal the uh, last couple of weeks. We got a lot more done, and I really appreciate you guys. I just want to say it's fixing to cool off, and we just need a little rain. We'll be in good shape. No. No. I don't have anything. Well, appreciate everybody coming out today. It is Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month, so that's one reason I got my pink jacket on today. And uh, we want to thank about our ladies while, while this is all going on. Uh, anything else, uh, we appreciate y'all being here. And uh, with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to adjourn. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We'll adjourn at 54. Thank you for coming.